Dean's been uh, pulled across by the fourth official. And he sent Arsene Wenger off. Am I all right up here is the gesture. He's in the firing line. Zidane's career ends in disgrace. Yeah. You can't excuse that. It's Torres oh. to give Chelsea oh. a place in the Champions League final. This is a story based on five brothers that took full advantage of the lockdown restrictions and created viral moments which sent shockwaves to homes all across the world. The Munich and they're struggling to... Oh, that's sensational! Oh, Ibrahimovic, surely not. Oh. With all to play for in the future, the Tedeku brothers, alongside friends and family, reflect on their journey behind the memorable lockdown experience. You think you ready, huh? Cameron, so you think you ready, huh? You ain't got nothing on me, nigga. I got more money than you. My clothes fit, fit me better. I got more holes than you. Maybe if you had more money, you could stand on it and you could be my height. Nigga, you ain't ever gonna get to my height. You nothing, nigga. You 5'9". What you gonna do? Sway for me. <laughs> <laughs> the Tedeku brothers represent, for me, family, integrity, and truth. Even though we're selected by blood, it's like having a man them over, do you get me? And that's like a beautiful feeling. That's a very creative bunch that I have good ideas and good execution. It's kind of like, it's just like Christmas, isn't it? Do you know what I'm saying? It's like Christmas all the time. Anyone who knows the Tedeku brothers knows that family is so, so, so integral to the way in which they operate. And so when you become friends with the Tedeku brothers, you become family with the Tedeku brothers. So for me, they represent everything that's pure and loving about a family unit. It's very inspiring. Like when I look at them, like, yeah, I want that for when I have my kids, like, that bond there. It's, it's a bit cliche, I'll say brotherhood, man. It's a unit. It's like everyone's kind of got the same mindset, got ready to push, ready to move forward. Unit. Unit. I feel like we're a unit. Obviously, we've got everyone doing their own thing, but we're like if somebody says we need to come together, we come together, we do our thing, we get panned. Whether it be bantering, doing something mad creative, doing something dumb, drawing someone out, doing something crazy, it's just there's always something going on in the yard. I love the vibes man, they're like energetic, you know, full of them, like something that I, I like, I, I tune in to watch. They're always producing stuff that makes me want to want more. They've always been like ambitious and they've always had a vision. But they've also been very, very close as brothers. Very, very close. You know, from Ben down to down to Josh, they're all they're all hilarious. So seeing Gabriel being able to pick that up and literally follow suit, he just shows it runs in the family, he's in the genes, he's in the stitching. Positive and active. It's difficult to get family members to stay together and be so cohesive and stay as a unit for so long. And one of the things that I think that they've almost it's it's weird, it's almost like they've taught themselves. Never leave your brother behind. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> That's the shot! That's the shot! That's the shot! The sun is shining right now. But let me be the bearer of bad news. I'm, I've got people in the house right now. You got you, sir. That sunshine ain't gonna last forever. Yes, sir. It's not gonna last forever. Yes, but you won't survive the rain if you he ain't won't. got an umbrella, nigga. He won't. All right, he got a gun. Oh, Lord. He got a gun, right there. Come here, little man. Come here, little man. Oh, my Come God. Come on, little nigga. Come on, oh, man. God. You don't need that. Oh, you don't God. need that. You don't need it. Look, look, drop that gun. He don't need it. Dicky Joshua, can I get you over it? Dicky Joshua, can I get you over it? You need to drop that gun. <laughs> the coronavirus is the biggest threat this country has faced for decades. You must stay at home. On the 23rd of March, the UK entered its first official lockdown. This meant no activities, gatherings or travel for non-essential reasons, with approximately 80% of the UK quarantining at home. When you're hustling all the time, sometimes it's easy to think it's just about you. That's just, it's just you going for that grind. But all of a sudden, everyone was in the same boat. Hearing the news, I thought, oh yeah, this is nonsense. It's only going to last like two weeks. I was a manager and all like, the juniors below me was saying, how long do you think it's going to last? I said, oh, two weeks, man, we'll be back. I ain't seen them people since, like. <laughs> I didn't like it. I, I wanted to stay with my friends. I didn't like it at all. Not, no, no. First couple of weeks, at first it was chilled, nobody has to do nothing, but it kind of got a bit boring, seeing the same content all the time, you can't go nowhere, same faces. Someone telling you, you can't do this, you can't go there. So it just took a while to adapt into it. I was gassed. It gave us the opportunity to just 
make some films, which I really wanted to do anyway. Innit? This is time like for us to kind of like put our foot down and start creating. Do you know what I mean? Because I know when we're together, whether it's like intentionally or unintentionally, we're either gonna get a reality TV snippet on Snapchat or, or something like. There's always gonna be a little vibe going on in the house. E man's always recording something in the yard. The camera's always rolling, so he's always gonna catch something or someone slipping. Do you know what I'm saying? And people just find it funny in it. So yeah, man, it's just entertainment in it. Do you know what I'm saying? Lockdown was the, the Kickstarter, innit? Because before that, we always had ideas to do, but we never really did them. But when lockdown happened, we had no excuse. Let's go. Let's run with it. Those tested, 17,089 have uh, revealed positive results. And as of five o'clock on Friday yesterday, of those hospitalized in the UK, 1,019 have now died. Obviously, so I had a conversation with Eman that we're going to knock out some films. We wrote a script straight away called Last Man Standing, like a coronavirus centered themed film. And obviously we started cracking up with it. We done our read through, we done our script readings, we done our, our practice sets and whatnot. We're in love with the idea and that if it was if it was good and then like the news of the virus just started getting worse, didn't it? People started dying, people started losing their loved ones. But we still try to pay it in our mind until it got to like the, the number of the deaths was just rising daily, like we were just like, bro, now nah, we can't do this more. Like cancelled on the come up and that's not what we want. Well like it's a bit mad if we put this out, isn't it? It's gonna end the journey before you even start, so <laughs> yes, yeah, we just dip it out. I'm happy we kind of read the room. I, I remember we didn't even have an initial conversation, we just stopped filming it, do you know what I mean? And that was just like a, like an antenna moment, so yeah. Literally got, yeah, bet, 1v1, bet. Gabriel bought like V points or something like that on FIFA, innit? I don't know what, I don't really know what that is. After that, I just banned him. When he was holding his ban, he went into the garden a lot more because he knew he couldn't play on the PS4, innit? So he went into the garden and started kicking ball. I spent £80 on my brother's credit card. Reeboks, FIFA points, everything was on me. I felt like it was just depending on me. Just one sweet Reeboks or FIFA points won't hurt. I bought them. I was in massive trouble. Massive trouble. As of him spending a lot more time in the garden, you know, there's me kind of just in my room, kind of watching him in the garden, recording him. I hit that target, hit that target. Just a little joke thing like that just comes with being a Teddy queue, just being in the household. Bruv, well going for you, bro. Hit the net, you got one chance, mate. Celebration, celebration, celebration. Different thing, different thing. Yeah! <laughs> And then I think it was on a Sunday, um, we actually went out together and I called Josh down and we actually rotated the trampoline um, to make it look like a goal. I don't know how they came up with that, but he turned it around and um, yeah, it just became the goal now, innit? Not only do we have something that like we can imagine as a goal, we've also got something that you can be a goalkeeper, aka Gabriel, and he can do the maddest dives and not feel injured or not get bruised on, 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 the, on the grass, do you know what I mean? So it was just like a win-win. So there's me kind of like stroking my ego, just taking shots at Gable, like just banging the ball at Gable, trying to get some nice, nice shots. I've even set up the tripod, I'm on Snapchat, kind of just telling people, I watch this shot, boom, 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 trying to do a mad thing. We were just like, oh, what's this guy up to again? You get me, he's always up to something, like if you're doing something. And then he comes to me, he's like, hey, what's good commentary to put over this? I mentioned Lewandowski, you know, that was like, top bins banging, that's something he would do. And then uh, he put it over, and that's really how everything began after that moment there. So with not much thought, Eman released the first video, attracting nothing more than a minor response from friends and family. But that little engagement sparked a flame of ideas. It was a strenuous time, man, um, that lockdown period, because there was no football going on. All the football platforms were just kind of like posting stats. Nothing was really exciting. I feel like the, the, the football took a lot were roasting. Do you know what I mean? They, they needed something. I just get this mad urge in the morning to like create some great moments what happened in football. So there's me. I've got Gabriel. I've kind of sold him the idea. I'm like, yeah, Gabriel, you're going to be in goal. I was ready, so 
We did it. Emmanuel just came with the idea to me. He was like, let's do this. And I had nothing better to do. You know, man was, I was sitting in my room doing absolutely nothing. Online lessons, I hated it. And we've kind of just done these moments, having fun. You know what I mean? Just enjoying it. And I remember the last moment that we wanted to do was the Adebayor one. So I called, like, literally Ben to come and, like, help me, like, just throw, like, the rubbish at me and stuff like that. And, like, when I released it the next day, not thinking much of it again, just, again, lockdown, nothing to do, kind of just, like, dash it out there, it received, like, a, a mad traction. I remember, like, within the first 30 minutes, I kind of looked at my phone after, like, 30 minutes, and it was on, like, a, like a thousand retweets on Twitter, like, a couple of people were rating it on Instagram, and then some big platforms started reposting it, and I was just like, rah, like, this is mad. And someone Twitter minding my own business, <laughs> and I see them, man, I'm like, okay, cool. Anything these bands do, they do with excellence, so let me watch it. I'm watching, I realise I'm laughing. Then I can't stop laughing. Then I start screaming. I was like, okay, these lot, they've got something explosive here. People are clocking, these are talented. To me, it was, it was genius. It's how it's done on the telly and how it was recreated. And even though it's done in a garden, you can't really tell the difference. It's like a breath of fresh air, because it's something completely different, but it hit home. The fact that they went over and beyond to like, make it clear what moment it was and it was and, and it was funny if there were even five minutes i could have sat there and watched it for five minutes i remember straight away thinking they're doing what they're supposed to be doing i wasn't surprised in any way but i was entertained so i just thought oh everyone needs to see this i sent it to all my friends i don't know i didn't i wasn't too excited i guess in it but then he came home and he's like yeah but it's done a million views and whatnot and i was just like right like, really people are really soaking this up like you know what i'm saying i'm gonna keep it 100 i did not expect anything to come with this. I was just like, I was just doing this for fun because I've got nothing better to do. And I was like, nah, I want to see more. Just enjoy it. We're in lockdown, there's no football. It's all we get right now and it's fine. Man. The fact that it doesn't matter whether you watch football or not, they're going to put something in there that's going to grab your attention and you're going to find it funny. If it was a uh, corporate doing it, it would have been done on that beautiful AstroTurf. Everyone's in like shiny kits. But this is just raw and it was just like, that could help allow people to connect emotionally. Once, once Eman spotted the traction that it got, he's like, yeah, we're running with this, innit? So that's when we all started getting involved. It's lockdown, we're privileged to have a garden, you know, um, let's kind of just run with it and see what happens. But let's just give the people what they want, innit? Creative process, it was like, it was basically, it was just rinse and repeat. It was like, we go into the garden, we figure out what we're doing, get the props that we need and uh, do our thing and that's, really and truly how it went for every single one of them. It wasn't really too forced. Like, it was it was like, just what we found funny, literally, like, as as man them out there. There was no football at that time, innit, you know what I'm saying? So there was a void. And we were just, we were essentially filling in that gap. So, the Teddy Crew brothers decided to run with the idea they had birthed just days before. Oh, and Gerard slipped, and Denver Bar's in here. Out comes Mini Lay, but this allowed them to cater to an audience who are keen for fresh entertainment during the difficult quarantine period. This led them to create two more videos choosing their memorable moments in both the Premier League and Champions League. The videos went on to attract the attention of millions of people worldwide. This was entertainment that couldn't be missed. Through the spirit of new creation, the Tedeku brothers influenced other families to become creatives in their gardens. Media companies such as the BBC picked up the idea and also produced their own versions. The Tedeku brothers reached the point where they decided to release one last video. Through engaging with the audience on social platforms, there was only one compilation the supporters were really interested in seeing. We always knew like if we do the World Cup moments, it has to be the biggest, it has to be the baddest, 
it has to be the best like there's so many iconic moments that we can do the sun was out it was just beautiful like everyone was just on job normally like just to get all the brothers out it probably takes like an hour honestly but with that World Cup moments, it was there was something special in the air, like where everyone was just out on time, ready to just go. I'm just like, let's not rinse this out, innit? You know what I'm saying? Let's just go out of a bang. I'm itching to always make the video better, innit? So started putting in transitions and and kind of different camera angles and that. If I was to say there was any like easiest video to shoot, it would have been World Cup moments. That was the easiest one. Because we put so much into it, I think that one was um, one of the longest shoots. We had a structure of what we were going to do, but we, as we were going along, we was coming up with new things and new ways to do it. Zidane headbutt, that has to be in it, but what can we do to kind of surprise the audience on a mad thing? And I know it's messed, and I know it sounds messed, but it was just shaving a circle in Gabriel's head. I was watching YouTube, he said, yo, 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 let's do this a damn football moment. He watches these young kids with like the newest football boots. So I was like to Gabriel, it's like, yo, bro, like if you do this, man will get you some football boots. When he said football boots, in my head, I was like, football boots, real football boots, not like paper football boots or something. And I was like, yeah. So the next day we did it. Over the content, just me. How does it feel to have a ball patch? Ben even should have done it, but it is what it is, mate. Mm. It has to be done. Mm. So. That's not doing nothing, go on. Right, so, the Teduku boys spent the next couple of days ensuring that as it was their last video, they will make it the best compilation of moments it could possibly be. Pulling out all of the stops, angles, transitional shots, and comedic elements for the finale. <laughs> fam, this fam Percy thing's not easy, blood. Uh, this is all for you lot, you know, uh, trust me. Fam. No, it's gonna go round Ben basically. It's like over and round. Do you know, try to get into the camera, like loop it. Yeah, three, two, one, go. Perfect. Gabriel, yeah? Yeah? Perfect, perfect. Action, action. <laughs> He needs the bunny to be on him. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> How did he get a body? Turn. <laughs> alright, cool, alright, cool. Alright, penalty, penalty, penalty. <laughs> One last time, man. One last time, man. One last time. Alright, listen. Let me tell you something, yeah. It's a large possibility that we've just flipping stretched it, or well, there's a large possibility that this is just gonna, <laughs> this is just gonna be sick, man. I don't know, man. You lot decide. On the 20th of April, 2020, the Tedeku brothers released the video, knowing they had created a masterpiece. But naive to the potential reach, the compilation accumulated 3 million views on Twitter in the first 24 hours. The standout moments highlighted by the viewers were Ghana missing an important penalty versus Uruguay in 2010 and the Zidane headbutt in 2006, which both trended on Twitter. One thing that I think is super underrated, the angles. Using the garden in a way that made it look as big as a pitch is all to do with the creative process. He shaved his head like... <laughs> He didn't even do it clean, like, did he not sit still or not? <laughs> like, nah, he shaved his head. Nah, they didn't shave his head. <laughs> I had to pull it back. That was too funny. Got me. Like, I'd sent it to all my friends instantly. I said, you man, look at this. A lot of people don't like to put the effort into things, but the fact that the hair was sacrificed, it showed how much they wanted to make this work and make it very unique. I, I sent it before I finished watching it. Cause I was like, nah, I already know it's going to be funny because like, at this point I was already looking forward to, to their videos. The moments are so legendary and memorable and you're all there, you remember how you feel in the moment. So when, it, when it's replayed back to you or, or recreated, you kind of get the same feelings. When that happened, we were all downstairs as a family and one minute it was all joys and then crossbar, we all had a heartbreak. That segment in particular brought me back to that day in this very house. It's almost like a what could have been. Ghana could have been the next Wakanda. It was painful because of what certain individuals 
in the game did and how they were able to capture those moments for me to watch and think, oh man, I'm loving what these guys are doing, but it's also hurting me a lot. I'm from Ghana and Suarez. I'm going to get emotional. When my man was by the house celebrating, it just took me back there and I connected. That was it. We had the brothers on the other side of the fence, so it looked like they were fans. The wigs that we used, I think that was really, really hilarious. Seeing people in their homes reacting to the goal, like it's actually real. I thought it was, yeah, professional cameras, but come to find out, yeah, it was all shot on the iPhone. The value that was given to me was just entertainment in this most authentic self, innit? It was, it was like a new person every day. Like, I have an E-man or Ben burst into my room and go, bro, this person retweeted, I'm like, no way. I saw the views and I was shocked. Like all these names were popping up and I was just like, rah, this video that he's doing, it's going, it's going crazy. If you could get anyone else to do it, I don't think they would have done it as good as the boys did. Just happy to, to be able to make people laugh in a very tough time. Full realisation of the viral moment kicked in when Grandma Tedeku called from Ghana to let the boys know about the waves they were making back home. Hearing Nana's warming compliments over the phone was the icing on the cake for the boys. For, our, like, for the relatives in Ghana to see what we were doing in the garden was mad, like, do you know what I'm saying? And then just the Ghana newspaper to pick it up as well. It's like, rah, people are writing about us, bro. <laughs> like, people are writing about what we did, do you know what I'm saying? So it's crazy. Gabriel's sacrifice for the art really paid off and was crowned the star of the show by the viewers. His efforts also earned him a pair of extra football boots purchased by the well-known rapper Tion Wayne. Bro, Tion Wayne's getting you some, some a second pair of boots still. Yes! <laughs> Thank you for all the broskies out there helping us do our thing, fam. <laughs> Would I do it again? Yeah. Oh, genius! Absolute genius! <laughs> These are the Nike boots, speedy dreams. Alright, cool, run. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a perfect place to run. Don't try it at home. Over the next few days, the Tedeku brothers experienced a whirlwind of appreciation from notable platforms such as 433, ESPN, Sports Bible and Squawker Sports, as well as hundreds of other international blog pages. This accumulated a combined total of 30 million plus views. Although the boys made an initial decision to stop the football videos, they decided to recommence on a monthly basis. They used this as a strategy to bring more eyes to what they had initially planned, short narrative films. Suspects are Michael and Gable Johnson. This father and son duo are wanted on robbery charges, specifically stealing from my personal snack drawer. I say we lay a trap for him. A trap that he wouldn't be able to resist. A sea of snacks on the table. Tomorrow. We'll move on him tomorrow. During the month of July, Iman went through a process of drawing up ideas for the next video, but he couldn't seem to find the X Factor moment that would take the video to a level above the last release. However, this all changed on the 13th of July when the boys witnessed a moment that would go down in the history books. That the only opinion that matters is the opinion you have about yourself. And I'll say it for the people in the back. Wickham's in the championship. Wait, wait. I'll say it one more time. Wickham's in the champion. Wait! People in the back didn't hear me. Wickham is in the championship. Eman saw it. He's like, yeah, we're doing it. I was just like, rah, like, I'm, I'm heavily inspired by this. Like, how are we going to make this moment comedic, different and creative? That's, that, that was the only thing on my mind. As the lockdown restrictions began to ease, the boys invited their friends and family to their infamous back garden to create a moment that will ultimately grab the attention of football fan favourite, the legend, the beast, Adibayo Akinfenwa. Basically, what we need from you guys, yeah, is just the energy in regards to, it's basically like a mm, 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 word, word type of environment. So essentially, when Ben's barring, you lot got to help him, like, you get me? Yeah, he needs you lot, like, more than ever. First of all, I want to thank God, because without God, none of this would be one of this would be. Yeah, yeah. 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 all of that, stuff. all of that. Only opinion that matters is the one you. <laughs> <laughs> Praying, one day things will get far better. Yeah. yeah. 
Come on. But now today I want to tell you. <laughs> Sit down. That is not gonna happen as well. <laughs> Upon its release, the video went viral immediately and caught the attention of Akin Fenwa within the first 20 minutes of its upload. 18 days later, the boys were invited to an outdoor viewing of the Champions League final hosted by Celidor, where coincidentally, Akin Fenwa happened to be presented. The boys were able to share a quality moment together. Like, who did it better? Let me share it for the people in the back. No, no, let me share it for the people at the back. Yeah! <laughs> I, I, I clocked it and then I watched the video and then because I've seen you lot's videos before where you know you've recreated goals so, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. so I see I started seeing it and I see yeah man take the mic and that I was like nah B <laughs> this wait this C looks familiar yeah. so even the first bar was like yeah 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 you know what let me say it for the people in the back here. Like, yeah, yeah, first yeah. of all, and then I was like, Ray. And what I mean, I kid you not, I watched it a good <laughs> 20 odd times. And then one of my football members put it in our football group okay. and said, Yo, B, check this. The whole WhatsApp group was just passing up. And for me, I just thought it was genius. I was like, Nah, man, this is killing me. And I just kept on shouting it to my kids. I think sometimes, every now and again, I just think you get. You, you see something and you're just like, nah, man, that's genius. Yeah, yeah. That's creativity at its utmost. And uh, for me, it's, it wasn't a goal. Like, it's easy to recreate a goal. Yeah, yeah. But to recreate a post-match interview in that way and creative enough, and I'm talking about that like, which people may not even clock. I'm talking about when the kids run in and yeah, the woman yeah, grabbing. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> you're a church goer. You, you know, know it. You know, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Like, genuinely, the whole thing, I was like, nah, man, I'll take my hat off. Moving forward, the aim for the Tedeku brothers is to develop their film style and nature and storytelling. With the focus being on direction over speed, the Tedeku lockdown is a chapter in their journey that they will never forget. <laughs>